Arizona football does an amazing job at the Combine. NFL players are starting to uh, show up as possible Arizona prospects. What does this mean for now and for going forward? You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. This is brought to you by Nissan. Check it out, Nissan. Okay, now we're gonna. We've been talking to heavy Arizona basketball because we are obviously very good at the basketball, and we will continue to talk about that. But a couple other things, it, uh, with a, a little couple other housekeeping uh, notes, we need to now talk about some Arizona football because we have been remiss. We have not only have we been remiss, um, we have been. Uh, Probably a little absent without leave uh, about talking about some Arizona football. And listen, everybody's kind of bummed with the uh, the way that uh, uh, Jed Fish left. I get all of that. But the uh, one thing that we uh, one thing we need to talk about though is that listen. And I was talking about this with Sheer a little bit. He did a pretty good job as far as getting. Uh, he did a really good job here, actually. You know, obviously there's a, there's talent left over, and there's some good players all the way across the board, but. A big part of it was that, you know, under uh, under Richrod, under, um, you know, obviously under Sumlin, um, Arizona just didn't produce many NFL players. And, um, you know, that was also the case with, uh, that you know, uh, in the early stages of Mike Stoops, Mike Stoops produced a lot of NFL players and heck, even towards the end. And for a while there, you looked out and you were like, wow, you got Rob Gronkowski, obviously. You've got Earl Mitchell. You've got Antoine Kaysan. You've got, I mean, I can just keep, I can just keep going. You've had a, uh, you know, you had a bunch of uh, different players that Nick Foles, obviously, that played in the, uh, that played in the NFL. Um, that kind of uh, came to a halt. Um, and then I'll never forget, we were at the, Ben White and myself were at the uh, USC game and we're looking around and we're like, hmm, uh, like USC's like the 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 broadcaster is reading off all the USC football alums and we look at it and we're like um there's literally nobody from Arizona it was a special teams player and like a kicker and that was essentially it and you know let's be honest here every kid's goal no matter what they say is to play in the NFL it's just the way it is um and think about back to when you know if you were playing football or basketball your goal generally was i want to get to the professional sports realm i want to get to that uh you know that uh, rank you know and you want to go to a school that can help you get there arizona for the longest time couldn't now there's a lot of players on this roster some of them were uh, brought in by jed fish others weren't jed fish doesn't get full credit for these players no matter what he uh tries to say but um, either way, there's this is going to be a very, very good draft for the University of Arizona. And uh, obviously, let's start off with uh, Jordan Morgan. Um, he's obviously not in the show rundown, and that's uh, that's on me. But Jordan Morgan, it just kind of goes without saying, is, um, you know, he's a monster. He's going to be a first-round pick. And a kid from Marana that I was wrong on, honestly. Like, I watched him, and I was like, all right, this guy, you know, he's good. He's got some potential. But I didn't see him being somebody that was going to be a true difference maker, I guess. Somebody that uh, I thought he would be more of kind of that Stevie Rocker in a different position. No offense to Stevie Rocker, where, um, you know, it uh, you're a solid, kind of your solid role player. But that's uh, that's it. You maybe be a swing tackle. Um that's not what Jordan Morgan is. Jordan Morgan is an absolute superstar. Um, and he was left here as one of the best tackles in school history. And there have been good tackles here for sure. So it's not like this is like saying, oh, you know, it's the best, uh, you know, NFL running back in uh, school history or something. I mean, that's not really, that's obviously not the case. But Morgan, though, uh, tested out very well. And during his drills, um, he, he, like I said, he looked the part. Uh, he also is a plug and play guy. You put him in there and he's going to be able to uh, he's going to be able to, uh, you know, make the plays necessary and, you know, be able to keep the uh, keep the uh, pass rusher off the quarterback. I mean, honestly, in the NFL, there's two there's two important positions and then there's everybody else. There's the position where you are protecting the quarterback. I uh, uh, Jordan Morgan 
That's the second most important one. And then there is the quarterback. They uh, obviously the far and away the most. I mean, you just look at it. If you don't have a quarterback, and again, I'm not breaking any news, you don't have anything in the NFL. That's just that's just the way it is. You don't have anything. Um, and that didn't used to always be the case, but it's very difficult to be able to uh, bring a uh, to bring a quarterback around that can. Um, you know, it's just kind of a game manager. The days of, you know, your Trent Dilfers are kind of over. I mean, maybe there's a case of it, but I don't really know which one that, you know, who the, who those are. Um, So you got to have a quarterback and Jordan Morgan is going to be one of those players that can protect it. And honestly, Jordan Morgan's kind of a flawless prospect. Now, again, it's not like he's Orlando pace, but he's also a, uh, he's also, he's big, he's strong, and he can engage, and he can move. And keep in mind, too, he's a super, super hard worker. This was a dude who, excuse me, this was a dude who um, obviously blew out his knee and uh, probably would have been a second or a third round pick last year, but came back to Arizona, uh, rehabbed, and inc- rehabbed incredibly well, and Looked like he had never left the field. And he's obviously a very, very fast uh, healer because not only uh, not only all of that, the uh, you watched him and you're like, man, like he was two to three months removed from surgery and he was already running on the uh, – he was already running on the sideline. He was already – or jogging. He was already making light cuts. He's obviously a pretty quick healer, and it was just impressive to be able to watch what he was able to do because I think a lot of people, including myself, are like, all right, well, this is going to take a little bit of time. It didn't take any time. Um, and, again, that is definitely a testament to Jordan Morgan and his uh, his rehabbing abilities because it was, like I said, it was it was some pretty impressive stuff. Um, but I expect him to go, you know, you look at looking in the NFL drafts, You'll see him uh, showing up anywhere between, you know, 20 and 40. This a lot of times this happens during NFL drafts where you kind of just get somebody who um, just kind of catches fire, for lack of a better term. Uh, Not only catches fire, um, he uh, and, you know, he and those are generally tackles and those are generally quarterbacks. So keep an eye on him. But again, I think that there's going, there's every reason to believe that he is, uh, he is going to be a a high pick in this uh, NFL draft. And again, it's going to be a cool thing because this would be, if he was a first round pick, this would be the second straight year that a Tucson native um, born and raised would be. And again, Moran, I get it was a a first round pick. You generally don't see a lot of, you don't see much of that. That would be really a really, really cool shout out to the five two zero. Um, and just kind of where things are going. But again, two straight first round picks. Yes, please sign me up for two. All right, something else to sign me up for two. FanDuel, check it out. FanDuel, all kinds of good stuff. New customers, you can get up $150 or $200 depending on the uh, deal on and bonus bets with any $5 bet. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, check it out. Basketball season's here, obviously. We are in the heart of basketball season, and it is a glorious thing. Love love this. Love this time of the year, as should you. Check it out, fanduel.com slash locked on. All kinds of good stuff. And um, you will thank me later um, because, again, basketball's here. And what is more enjoyable, even if you have a game that you have no interest in? Heck, you could be watching the Pistons against the Rockets. And – it could be boring you out of your mind. Your eyes could be bleeding. But at the same time, you're like, all right, well, this is a lot better because um, this is this is OK, because honestly, we're kind of at the stage where um, I just want to be entertained. And that is exactly where we're at. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. All right, we talked about the great Jordan Morgan and what Jordan Morgan was able to do. Now let's move a little bit down the uh, let's move a little bit down the uh, you know the list and talk about some other players. All right, Jacob Cowing, my friends, Jacob Cowing. Now listen, um, Jacob Cowing. I was not surprised at all when he measured in at five foot eight. I thought he would measure in at five foot eight because he's five foot eight. Um, it always cracks me up when schools put somebody in there that they say is five foot 11 or six foot. I mean, I guess you could lie about an inch. You can't lie about three, three or four inches. So again, and I always kind of think that does a little bit of a disservice to the kid. Um, but whatever, be, be, be that, be that what it may or be it what, whatever. Um, 
the dude is uh, the dude's five foot. Uh, the dude's five foot eight, and but there, again, there's a lot of players in the NFL that he could emulate. I've been saying from day one. I don't understand why he can't necessarily be a Zay Flowers. Um, both have uh, very fit, same, very similar physical dimensions. Both run pretty much the same forty time. Jacob Cowing certainly helped himself by running a four three eight. Um, that was uh, something that he needed to do. And then you look at it from a production perspective. Jacob Cowing at the U of A was wildly, uh, uh, was wildly, wildly successful in that he, uh, you know, um, he had big yardage numbers. He had big touchdown numbers. And I think the touchdown numbers are one thing that's very int intriguing because a lot of times with smaller players, you wonder, all right, are they going to be able to get into the end zone? Are they going to be able to do this? They're going to be able to do that. Jacob Cowing was able to do all that. And I think that was something that was obviously uh, impressive. And that was something that I think as a, uh, as a fan, you're like, all right, well, that was some pretty cool stuff right there. Um, but Cowing though, um, again, I think that's the template. I think the template is Zay Flowers. I just don't know. Uh, Zay Flowers, I think is, I'll give him this. I think that he's more elusive. Keep, well, keep in mind, we're talking about the Baltimore Ravens uh, uh, rookie wide receiver. He's more elusive with the ball. I'll definitely give him that. Um, but other than that, um, I think that he's also a uh, he's also a player who is, uh, you know, um, he's also a guy that I think you can kind of plug and play. Not only can you plug in, not only can you plug and play, I think that you can also say that, um, you know, uh, he's going to be a good locker room guy, good special teams guy. I think he's going to have a long career, honestly. I think he's going to be somebody that's going to play in the league for, you know, set uh seven to 10 years. And I think he just goes about uh, doing things the right way. And that's a big thing. Um, I think when you go about doing things the right way, it definitely helps you. And I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm excited to be able to see exactly what he can do. Cause I think he's, like I said, I think he's going to stick. It'll be interesting to see where he goes um, because you could see him being anywhere from an early third to like a fifth or anywhere in between. But I'll tell you what, who, if somebody picks him in that realm, you are going to get a steal of a football player because Again, this dude can play, and not only can he play, he's going to be ready for he's going to be ready for anything that you throw at him. Um, again, just excited to watch what he can do. Been through a lot, obviously, um, and I'll always remember the thing that uh, Tyler Owens said when he uh, uh, ex U of A strength and conditioning coach, where he said the big thing with Jacob when we got him back is to increase his body armor. I thought that was a very good way of putting it. Said he's still a little bit too light, and you know he had some injuries that. Uh, last uh, the previous year he did all those injuries were essentially gone this uh this past year and he played out and you know again you get uh, your five foot eight you get double digit touchdowns um we've already had the thousand yard receiving it's gonna be exciting to see what he can do and again i think one thing that he's really got going for him is that his burst that speed from one to fit 10 yards is very very uh is very very impressive and um, like I said, I think that I speak for all U of A fans when I say that I'm excited to see what he can do because I think he's going to make a real impact. All right. Now, Tanner McLaughlin, another one. Now, Tanner McLaughlin also does not surprise me much. I thought Tanner McLaughlin would test well at the Combine, and he did. Um, listen, first of all, it's another kudos you got to give Jed Fish. I mean, you know, he found Tanner McLaughlin and where he did. But, you know, TMAC 2.0. Came in at about six foot five, two hundred and forty pounds. He's obviously starting NFL caliber size already. And then you look at his production, and his production's there as well. You know, you get you know in college, you get five or six hundred, uh, you get five or six hundred yards, you get five or six touchdowns. You're clearly in a good spot, and not only are you clearly in a good spot, you're also in the spot where. Um, you're, uh, I think it's probably, it's just pretty much fair to say that, um, you know, you're productive and you're big. But I think the uh, thing that so many people wonder about in these spots is, what are you going to run? What is that 40 time going to be? And um, he, you know, he killed it. You know, you run anything between a high four, uh, four five, low four six, and you're that size. I think that surprised a lot of people. I think a lot of people were thinking that he's probably going to run kind of in that four seven realm, something like that. And he blew that away. And he made himself a lot of money at the combine because now if you're an NFL team, you're looking at McLaughlin and you're wondering to yourself, well, what exactly can't he do? Um, because again, like we just talked about, he's got height, he's got production, he's got speed. He's pretty much got everything that you want as a, uh, you know, as an NFL GM. And I think that's, you know, that's something that's certainly um, a little bit enticing about him. I also think that you can project him out as a starter. 
Because keep in mind, you know, if you're looking at somebody that's going to be a top 100 pick, you're hoping that they can be an NFL starter, obviously, for, uh, you know, a good percentage of time. And I think that with the with uh, T-Mac 2.0, I think there's every reason to believe that he can be a starter because I don't know exactly what the uh, what the drawbacks are. It's not like he ran a 4940 or it's not like he wasn't productive or it's not like he was like 6'1", 245. He checks off pretty much every single box. So, again, he made himself a lot of money at the uh, at the NFL Combine. And, uh, you know, seeing him and Jacob Cowing doing it in the manner in which they did, I think was very cool. And I think you could see both of these guys being starters. And then getting to Michael Wiley. Um, listen, Michael Wiley didn't run a great 40 time, and he also wasn't able to do the pass catching drills, which is kind of a bummer because uh, his hand, or excuse me, one of his real strengths, and I think what really kind of differentiates himself from so many others, is his ability to be able to catch the uh, ball out of the backfield. But he got a hand injury, he's going to have to have surgery, but he put that off to run. Um, he ran a 4-5. Um, that honestly doesn't surprise me. Um, Michael Wiley, if he plays in the NFL, which I believe he will, Michael Wiley's thing is going to be in tan or kind of the intangibles thing. We talked, I talked about this a little bit before. It's going to be a little bit of that James White, um, that Shane Vereen type. Those are the kind of players that I think about, you know, that, uh, you know, the Rex Burkhead, um, you know, that played for the Patriots uh, during some of those runs where you're not really a bell cow running back but you're also somebody that's catching passes out of the backfield. You're doing just kind of a little bit of everything. Um, but again, he wasn't going to ever run a four, you know, he wasn't going to run a Jacob Cowling time. And if he ran a Jacob Cowling time, then he would have made himself a lot of money. But again, Wiley is somebody that can run between the uh, tackles, can catch passes out of the backfield, and he can do special teams, and he's going to be a coach's delight. And not only is he going to be a coach's delight, he's going to be somebody who, He's going to be somebody who I think a lot of people will look at and say, man, you know, uh, we didn't win the Super Bowl or we didn't win because of that. But we also won. Uh, we also won because um, of players like Michael Wiley. He's a, he's just a winning football player. I'm very curious to see where he goes, because I think once he gets into camp, a team's going to realize, man, you know, he's not going to be a superstar, but we got a player here. All right. Something that is a superstar, though, is Nissan. All right. Nissan. Like I said, go find your next big adventure. Shop now at Nissan USA. All right. Now, I have a Nissan. I have got a Nissan uh, Altima. Now, my previous car kept getting stolen. I did not like that. Um, and so when I'm shopping around, I was telling people, I said, listen, I got a budget, um, but I want something that looks kind of cool and um, something that is uh, gas friendly and that I can cruise around. And everybody just kept saying a Nissan and they were right. I absolutely love this Nissan. This uh, it's been it's been great for me. I'm gonna run this thing into the ground. But like I said, it's been very good. Go find your next adventure. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. And but again, all kinds of good stuff with Nissan. And not only is there a lot of good stuff there, and they look cool too. This isn't the Nissan from 10, 12 years ago. So again, go check it out. Go find your next big adventure. Shop uh, now at NissanUSA.com. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. All right. Now, let's go ahead and look a little bit ahead then to 2025, because that's really, I think, when there's going to be a lot of movement when it comes to U of A players that are going to be drafted. Um, now, again, this is going to be a big first one because you've got an excellent possibility of getting Jonas. Uh, excuse me. We'll get to him in a second. Uh, Jordan Morgan being a first round pick. Obviously, we broke down uh, uh, Cowling and McLaughlin having real chances of being top 100 picks. Michael Wiley probably factors in there somewhere as well. All right. Now, 2025. Um, this is where it gets really fascinating. Uh, first and foremost, you got T-Mac. Uh, T-Mac is I don't care what anybody says about Luther Burden or whatever. That is all nonsense from people that have not seen T-Mac. Uh, T-Mac is the best wide receiver in college football uh, coming into this year or next year. And I think Lewis Riddick put it very well. Lewis Riddick watched him, the great Lewis Riddick from ESPN, and said, yeah, this guy's really good. Um, not only is he really good, he is a uh, – he's uh, you know – 
He's got great ball skills, as we know. His acceleration is underrated, and he's huge. He's, you know, he's six foot four, 210 pounds. I mean, he is just a big time football player. He's the next five star wide receiver out of California, obviously. But everything about him is just impressive. He is, he's just a, he's just a darn good football player. Um, he projects as somebody that you plug and play immediately in the NFL, and he's, a, he's what a number one wide receiver looks like. Um, again, it'll be interesting to see what he runs, but I'm guessing it's going to be a faster time than people think. I'm guessing it's going to be something in the four fours. And if it's something in the four fours, then he's golden because again, uh, he's got probably the best hands. He's got some of the best jump ball skills that you'll ever see. And his acceleration is very underrated as well. Uh, T-Mac, I guess, and you know, and the, the production is there, obviously no, if Afita is going to get him the football, um, just very, very enticed to see what he can do. And I think going forward, um, he is going to be kind of the standard by which wide receivers here at the U of A are, uh, you know, are compared to. And that's obviously a good thing. Then after that, you got, uh, excuse me, then after that, uh, you got Jonah Sabanea, another guy that's going to be a first round pick. Now, um, Jonah, Jonah is a physical freak. He's what somebody like it looks like at Georgia or Alabama. I think jo Jonah is going to have a dominant junior season. Um, that's what Jonah needs to do. Um, he's already shown that he can play tackle. He's shown that he can also play on the inside. So if you're an NFL team, you know that you're getting a lot of position flexibility with him. And like I said, he just looks totally different. I'll never forget when Jed came in here and he was just talking about how you just looked at uh, 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 Jonah and he didn't look like a uh, – he didn't look like what, you know, your typical freshman, uh, you know, uh, freshman uh, lineman looks like that's 330 pounds because, you know, he doesn't have a gut. You can actually see ab muscles. And he's like I said, again, he's huge. He's 6'5", 330. He'd start anywhere in the country. So Arizona is going to have a possibility of having two. Uh, you know, high first round picks. And then after that, Takario Davis, assuming he stays, which I think every indication are so far that he is. Takario Davis is uh, very much in that realm as well. Six foot three cornerback with uh, that's always around the ball. Now, one thing is he can't really catch the ball, but that's also probably why he's playing cornerback and not wide receiver. But if Takario can learn to catch the ball, then you're probably looking at somebody that's going to be a first team All American because he was amongst the nation leaders in pass deflections and he had probably seven or eight interceptions that he should have had that literally just went right through his hands. So, again, Good, obviously a really good football player. All three of those guys are have very realistic expectations of being first round picks. Um, and then after that, you got a bunch of other players too that I think kind of fall into the mix that are uh, that are intriguing. That are intriguing as well. Um, just look up and down that offensive line. You know, when uh, Wendell Moy, Polito, those guys are going to be somebody again. Polito wouldn't be draft eligible. But then on the other side as well, I think Big uh, Bill. I think Big Bill Norton is going to play in the NFL. It, you know, six foot four, 350 pounds. Uh, he is, uh, you know, he's a load. And again, he's not going to be somebody that's necessarily going to blow up, uh, you know, that's going to, you know, get a bunch of sacks and whatnot. But overall, he's going to be somebody that's going to kind of get that. Uh, he's going to kind of get that engine flowing. And I think with, with that. Um, you know, you can, there aren't a ton of players like that. So again, there's a lot of guys on this team that I think have real, real NFL aspirations. And that's something that we're certainly going to keep a, uh, certainly going to keep tabs on. All right. Now, tomorrow we're going to get back into some Arizona basketball. We've got uh, Arizona against UCLA and then USC. So we're going to start breaking that one down. These are kind of, these are must win games for the cats as far as their number one seed. And let's be honest here. Everybody wants to win the PAC 12 in its last seat its last uh, go around and Arizona is obviously no different. So again, there's that, but on that note, very, very much appreciate you making making uh, Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. Again, we'll be back tomorrow with you, starting to preview UCLA and all kinds of stuff. Bear down and back the A.